A double stop blues transition taking you from the one chord to the four chord. One, two, three, and... Let's break that down. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started with another mini tutorial. One of the best ways to grow each day as a guitarist is just to take one small trick and add it into your repertoire. This is oftentimes more effective than having a really diverse practice routine. You're just taking one thing, practicing it to proficiency, so that way it's something that you can use day to day. So in this lesson, I'm going to be sharing with you this very useful, very cool double stop transition that takes you from the one chord to the four chord in a blues progression in the key of A. Okay, so I'm gonna put a tab up for this at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Once again, the little routine sounds like this. Ah, and there we are on the four chord, D7 or D9. Okay, let's get the essential elements of this first. Starting off on the A7 chord shape. Okay, I'm gonna play it with my thumb today. I've got the low E string, fifth fret, the fifth fret D string, sixth fret G, and the fifth fret B string. Blocking the A string, and also the high E string. A7. To get this trick down, you need to count it. So one and two, and a three, and four, one. Okay, so we strum the A7 chord shape. One and two, I'm gonna slap on beat number two where the snare drum would be if I was jamming with a drummer. So one and two. Now directly after the slap, we're going to throw in this very cool double stop descend in line. All right, I'm grabbing the seventh fret of the D string and also the uh, sixth fret of the G string. So that's the root note, A, and also the major third, C sharp. Okay, I'm gonna play those two notes. Sounds great if you can slide up into them. All right, then just descend chromatically. Okay, landing on the fifth fret of the D string, and also the fourth fret of the G string. You put that together and we've got one and two. Okay, count in the double stop section. One and two and a three. And a three. Okay, from there, we're going to set up the transition to the four chord. And we're waiting for beat number four. The way we're going to do it is we're going to use this idea of taking the target chord. In this case, it's a D9 chord shape and just playing a partial of it up one half step and then descending down to the target chord. Okay, it sounds like this. One and two. Very cool sound. Okay, so I've got the sixth fret of the D string and then with my middle finger, I'm barring across the six frets of the G string, B string and high E string. Okay, this is a little piece of a D sharp nine chord. You bring it down a half step to get yourself to D nine. Okay, a D nine partial, just a piece of the chord. Okay, so that's going to be four and one. All right, and then we start the next measure. Okay, you add that into the equation and we've got one and two and a three and four and one. Okay, now let's make your practice a little bit more interesting by throwing in an intro lick. This will make it a more complete practice routine. I'm gonna give you two different options. The first one is very B.B. King inspired. Okay, simply playing five up to seven on the B string and then going to the fifth fret high E string using that major pentatonic scale in A. Okay, and you're gonna count that four and a one. Okay. Now as another option, we can kind of play the exact same lick, just a little lower, going down an octave. Okay, so that's seven on the A string, 
then on the D string, four up to seven. Again, that major pentatonic scale. One and two. Okay. And as added practice, you might also want to make this sound as you transition to the four chord. So as you're at that approach chord, up one half step, that D sharp nine, you can strum down, grab the eighth fret of the high E string, return back to six, and then go down to the D nine. Very bluesy, very cool. Okay, add that into the mix, and we have one, Two, three, and four, and a one, and two, and a three, and four, and a one. Okay, so practice those techniques a bunch. Get them into your muscle memory. See if you can pull up some backing tracks. I got a bunch at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. And see if you can actually apply this today. Now, it's so cool if you can add in chordal elements and double stops into your licks. It's just something that professional, really high-level blues players do all the time. All right, friends. Thanks so much for checking out this mini lead guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. As always, big thanks to my patrons. I hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up, so keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Robert Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia, saying happy picking.